Hi, I'm Adam and welcome back to First Man Photography. Now in today's video, I want to share with you why I think photography can be so beneficial and essentially save you from these crazy times. Before we get going today though, this video is sponsored by Lexar. If you need fast, reliable and high quality SD cards, look no further than Lexar. Right, with these kind of videos where I'm talking about well-being and the mood and the joy of doing landscape photography, I often like to give it a nice, calm, quiet mood. Just the tone of the video generally. But I'm stood on this cliff and it's really windy. So <laughs> it's starting a little bit more manic, I suppose, and I'm composed for a shot. And it's this cliff down here that's really interesting me. I'll tell you why, because it's not totally straightforward. But what I'm attracted to is the tone of it. Not necessarily the colour though. I don't think there's anything particularly spectacular about the colour, although the sea is a very nice blue shade today. Whilst I've already composed the shot, I think it's crying out, really, to be a monochrome image or a black and white. I'll probably add a slight blue tone to return a little bit of the colour of the sea to the image. There's then some really lovely clouds in the sky as well at that sort of top third of my image. At the moment though, I have the sun striking down on it and I want to do a long exposure because it's going to work well for this composition. Essentially what I'm doing is using the camera to have that cliff face and a little bit of the curve just behind me there to bring us in from the right hand side of the image. That sort of turtle shaped end of the cliff face there or the, the headland is right slap bang pretty much in the center of my frame. By then using a long exposure because the waves are coming in from well the top left I suppose towards the bottom right of the image once I do a long exposure it's gonna create leading lines essentially coming from the bottom left of the screen to or the bottom left of the image rather up towards the middle so we're going to have the, the land guiding you in from one side and those long exposure waves drawing us up from the bottom left hand side to that centerpiece of the cliff. And once it's all black and white it's going to look really good. I don't want the sun though in the image although it is about to dip behind that cloud there. Can you see that? So that's going to work well. Once that's gone behind that thick cloud it's not going to come out again in the two minutes and what am I on? What is the shutter speed? Two minutes and 16 seconds using this. <laughs> this 10 stop filter here. At f11 and ISO 100, that was giving, about a, giving me about a minute. So I've upped the aperture to f16 to, to essentially give me that extra minute of exposure because now I'm thinking about it though, a minute might actually be really good because the clouds are nice, but I don't want too much movement in there. I either want them stationary or I want them very, smooth. I'm second guessing myself now just as I've been explaining it to you. I thought I had it all worked out but the sun is just about to dip so that light is now looking quite nice. I'm going to start with f16. I need to... why is it not shooting? Two second timer. There we go. I hadn't given this image much thought other than I wanted it black and white and, and the long exposure so I think I might have to do two. One at f16 and one at f11 and then see which one works out. And if I lose too much detail, I may then try it with a six stop filter. Oh, I don't know now. <laughs> yeah, good fun, a good start to the day. And that sun's gone now, so I'm getting that nice balanced exposure across the frame, still with some highlighted details where all the tones of those rocks, I think is gonna, which I think will work really well <laughs> in black and white. What a great start to the day. A little bit manic, a bit more manic than I wanted this video to be, but there we go. That's just the way it goes sometimes. So I really couldn't make up my mind with that image. The ones I showed you, or at least I'm planning to show you, were with the six stop filter and it was about three seconds. I vastly misjudged the correct exposure time when I was telling you a minute ago. I then put the 10 stop filter back in and did an exposure time of about three minutes, 15 seconds, something like that. Just through trial and error, I suppose. Sort of made it work. Still indecisive. Not sure what's gonna work until I get it back on the big screen. And to be fair, there's nothing 
particularly wrong with that. I've had those few ideas in my mind that I have put into the camera. Once I get it back on the big screen, I can figure it out from there, but <laughs> that's just the way it goes sometimes. Right, I'm going to now get down to the beach where the tide is going out nicely. So hopefully there's gonna be some nice exposed rocks and we can do something a little bit calmer. The wind's coming from behind the uh, little caravans there. So by the time I'm down on the beach, it should be nice and sheltered. I'm down on the beach and it's still pretty windy, but it is very peaceful. I've got pretty much this whole beach to myself. Things, I think, or it feels like things are going absolutely crazy in the world at the moment. All these economy issues bring my thinking back to 2008 when the economy crashed before. I was still in the police then, so I had a certain level of security that I don't enjoy now. Probably just about two years before that, I started getting really heavily back into photography. And what it did for me then was give me that certain level of escapism. And that's how I really came to love photography because it was I was doing a difficult job. It was stressful. The economy wasn't great. Things were tough. And just having that escape, having that creative thing to go to, to run away to essentially, and take your mind off the world was so important to me. And I think photography does that generally, but landscape photography does it even more because it gets us outside. Going outside and connecting to nature in that way is intrinsic to who we are. And if you don't do it enough, you're gonna find your mental health suffers. So just simply by going outside, you'll start to feel better. But then having these experiences with friends or by yourself are just so important. And then with the photography, doing landscape photography, we get to stand still, we get to experience a place, we get to, most people will just walk through as quick as you like, but we get to spend the time here, see the beauty that's before us, and then capture it with our cameras and do something creative. Because the temptation, I think, when money is tight particularly, is to do nothing. But it's by doing things, being busy, keeping the mind active, keeping the body active, that fulfillment will come, even in tough times. So we don't need to go talking about buying new cameras and buying new gear. Just use whatever you've got and get out there and make great photography. In fact, it doesn't even need to be great. Just get out there and do something and you'll find the reward comes eventually. Even if it's just being outside for the day, relaxing, getting your head together and giving you some positivity to move on and try and navigate these crazy times that we have in front of us. But I don't want to dwell too much on that because I want this video to be positive. I am about to shoot something that I'm not particularly interested in and it's this shipwreck. Now, this beach is famous for this shipwreck. It has been photographed hundreds, thousands, if not tens of thousands of times. So that's partly killing my interest, but all of those photos that I've seen, I've never been that interested. <laughs> but since I'm here, since I'm by myself, since the tide is low, and you can only see this at very low tide, I thought I'd just shoot it anyway. I've seen photos of it with beautiful sunsets in the background, and that doesn't really make a lot of sense to me because it's a shipwreck. I think it should be dark. I think it should be moody. I think it should be black and white, probably, as well, to really kind of reflect the mood of what is destruction doesn't make sense with a big bright saturated happy color i'm not going to talk through it too much it's just a very simple image wide angle ish to get it all in and i'll put it up on the screen I'm set up for another shot and I think it's the shot that I am most excited about that I've taken today which is possibly a little bit odd which you'll see in a minute but as you know 
This video is sponsored by Lexar and I've been using Lexar cards for many, many years. And that is because they are fast, they are reliable, and they are high quality. And I have put them over the years through absolutely everything. I have been in all weather conditions. I've dunked them in the water. I've crushed them. I've dropped them. I've mishandled them. And they still have never let me down. I particularly like this one. It's the Lexar Professional 1800X SD card. And it's just the kind of card that you just stick in your camera and you forget about it because it can do absolutely everything. It's good for your 4K footage. It's good for your fast burst rate stills. It comes in a range of sizes to suit everybody's needs. So head to the link down below and check the Lexar Professional 1800X SD card out and give Lexar some love for sponsoring this channel. <laughs> right, let's talk about this shot. I'm excited about this one because as, as I was walking past towards the sea a bit to look for a sunset shot, which I don't think is gonna happen tonight, I came across this, this beautiful rock here. And the, the rocks on this beach are covered in barnacles and just proved to be absolutely fascinating. When you come out to do photography, if you attach your hopes and your dreams and your experience of the actual day to getting a good image, then it's gonna remove some of the things we were talking about earlier. It's gonna remove your sense of fulfillment of the day, your sense that you've actually achieved something, getting that exercise. It's understandable because we all want a good shot. But like I said on the video the other week, there isn't always a great shot to be had. And that's particularly the case in these conditions. So I think what you can do in these situations is rather than get frustrated and get annoyed, which again, totally I am guilty of doing that, but you can focus in, pull out of this huge landscape, pull something out of it with a longer lens or pull some detail out of it. And right now I am pulling the detail out of this rock. It's gonna be a very, Bits of the cliff keep falling off, which is quite unnerving. But this is gonna be a very flat image. But there is detail in there, those lines and those shapes and the form of those holes in the rock and then those barnacles. It's a shot that's gonna be all about the detail. I wish I had a really, really high resolution camera for this because it would take the whole frame and get the whole thing in that I'm trying to do. But then you'd be able to see the fine details of those barnacles, which I just think is absolutely fascinating. So as you can see, it's just <laughs> this, this rock that's, I don't know, probably about a meter and a bit wide by 90 centimeters tall. So what I'm doing is filling the frame with it. I don't want any of the surroundings because I still, I think if you can see the barnacles in the final image, you'll be able to see that it's a rock at the beach. There's shells in there. So it just, it stinks of, the beach not physically but it's just it's the story of a rock at the beach but it's the shape the color it's all fascinating and i'm probably getting a little bit too excited about what's just a rock i think that's the beauty of being creative is that we can do different things we don't all have to do the same thing i just met a lovely guy over there who's sort of taking more of the tradition traditional type shot and there's nothing wrong with that either I will come back here and do that on a day when the weather's slightly better, but today I'm focusing on this. So I wanna get maximum detail. So I'm at F11 and because those holes in the rock go quite deep, F8 would be good for the sharpness, but just to get a little bit of depth to be able to see those shells inside some of those holes in the rock is what I want to do. So I'm just gonna take it now. I'm ISO 100 because I want this image to be as clean as clean can be. There's no wind whatsoever. F11, so it is about half a second exposure. Oh, that just looks so good. As I look at it on the screen here, it's got a blue tone to it almost. When I look at it here, it's much warmer. So in post, maybe I'll need to up the white balance a little bit, because it's a difficult one for the camera to white balance on its own. We never know. I might leave some of that coolness in those shadows, so there'll be some blue or blue tones almost in the shadows and pull some of the more yellowy oranges out, almost like an orange and teal feel to it, which I actually think will work really well. And it's, it's kind of the vibe I'm getting off it now. Oh, I think I've waffled on enough about that. Well, it's a fairly flat 2D image, but I'm excited about it and it's my image. So <laughs> there you go. Probably put one of these images available 
in the Continuum series, those five prints available. Not sure what image it's going to be yet, so you'll have to go down to the link below and check it out. And I'm going home tonight with a renewed sense of vigour, of excitement about photography, of <sighs> meaning and fulfilment. And really when it comes down to it, that's why I do landscape photography. I've had the escape from being sat in the office trying to make our business continue to work. <sighs> but I feel good right now. And strangely, <laughs> a big part of it, I think, is this rock. It's those little details. It's those beautiful little things that you notice in a landscape that can make it worthwhile and create unique images too. So, right, I've gone on enough. I will see you again very soon. Bye.